Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Dominic, I'm the host of the Android Factory. As you can see here on the emulator, we've been using the Rick and Morty API to build out this application. And at the bottom here, we have a view all episodes button that we should just navigate to another screen, displaying all the episodes for that user, or sorry, that character. And today's episode, we're gonna cover that. We're gonna cover some navigation components here, some navigation concepts here within Compose. As we get started here, please subscribe if you're brand new, smash that like button to help me out. And uh, here we go. We're just going to go ahead and add this into our dependencies block. And as that is syncing there, uh, nothing too crazy. We're going to need uh, a nav controller here. We're going to need a nav host. So it looks like it's very so uh, similar to the Jetpack, um, you know, not Compose, but just the Jetpack navigation that came out before Compose did. And then we're just going to go ahead and configure things like this. We have our different composables, we have them defined with these different routes, and then you get this little lambda callback when you need to navigate to that section. Navigating is like, you know, one simple command and all that stuff, and then it's just gonna swap out the composables for us, maintain backstacks and all that kind of good stuff. So um, it's, it's really not, <laughs> not super difficult. Uh, you just gotta configure it appropriately. Uh, we're not gonna use a bottom nav at the moment, but we might in the future, so stick around for that. Uh, so that we can kind of see how all that works. But uh, let's see here, we're going to have our uh, nav controller at our, our root here, right? So we're gonna have it inside of our activity, we're gonna have it at a place that is um, accessible for you know, all of our composables. Flipping through here, let's go ahead and just copy this nav host implementation. And right now inside of our, our you know activity, we are simply just putting one, you know, uh, composable on the screen and that's nice and all but we're obviously going to need to change that we are all ready to go here instead of profile we're going to name this I don't know, let's go with our character details and in that case it's going to oops sorry in that case it's going to be this composable here that we care for we don't have a friends list but let's go with uh, character episodes maybe we're going to call it uh, and it's basically going to be the composable that we're going to go to when they click on this view all episodes button in the emulator we obviously need to update our start destination to be the character details so we're going to have to go ahead and just copy and paste that there and then here we are obviously need to create our own composable and you know make it uh, whatever we want but for now we are just going to completely comment that out we're going to rerun the application to make sure that everything is still working and the emulator coming back to life here we see a loading state and boom we go right back to Rick Sanchez we go right back to our character details screen uh, which is this composable right we realistically want to go to another composable once we hit this uh, button here and so I'm going to go ahead and just create a composable down here. All right, folks, and here we have it. We have our composable. It's going to be the beginning of our character episode screen. It's very simple for now. We're just passing in that character ID. We just have a box filling the whole the whole size of the screen, centering our content, and we just have you know some text to actually output what we got. And so it, it's not anything special, but it is another composable here. It is another screen that we can actually use inside of this block over here. So we're gonna simply go ahead and say character episode screen. Well, we're going to need a uh, a character ID here, right? And, and, and where are we gonna get that? So realistically, we want this to be one because we have our character detail screen to also be one. So point is, is that, you know, Rick, Rick Sanchez is our first character. When we hit view all episodes, we wanna to go to that new page and we wanna to go to that with the character ID of one so that we can then either fetch that character or fetch all of the episodes for that character or do whatever we want for that particular character. But how are we going to basically pass this information from, from this detail screen, whatever ID we have there, to this, uh, the, the character episode screen that we need to view after that button click. Well, we can bounce back to our documentation here and we'll see that we can actually kind of embed arguments into the, the paths here of our different composables, much like how we would with like deep links or anything along those lines, we can actually just go ahead and use these curly braces and then some other information that we need to kind of you know help get us along. So if we just simply went like this, character ID, we will now have access to this character ID. Most importantly here, our implementation, we actually get the backstack entry inside of this Lambda. And then, you know, this Lambda here is, is being called whenever we need to navigate to that. So this navigates to our profile screen. You can actually gather the user ID as the argument there, or you can gather whatever it is that you want in here from the backstack entry. So I'm simply just gonna copy and paste that code. 
We're gonna go with this one, and then we gotta rename this to be the back stack entry. And once we do that here, we just have a little bit of an issue between the nullable string and the required int that we need. A simple fix here, we're just gonna go ahead and declare it on the line above so that it's a little bit more readable, but we can call the get int function instead of get string. We obviously need to pass in the correct key. So it's not user ID, instead it's character ID because that's what we're using here in this string. And then we just have our Elvis operator zero. I don't know if that's valid, so let's just go with negative one. So we are going to need a way to navigate from this character detail screen to this character episode screen. We have the, the proper form here for actually fetching the the configurable bit here, right, our ID, but we do need to uh, somehow handle the on click. And so what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna add a lambda here. It's obviously gonna give us a little bit of an error because it doesn't exist yet, but we're simply here going to say nav controller dot navigate, and then we're going to pass in the uh, information that we need here. So it's going to be the character episodes slash, and then I'm simply here going to put uh, dollar sign it, and obviously none of this works at the moment, but the point is, is that we're actually gonna go ahead and go into our character details screen, modify a few things, one of the things that we need to do here is create a lambda for basically that callback. So we're just going to simply put, you know, on episode clicked, let's call it this. We're going to have the character ID pass back to us, which is an integer, and it's going to, you know, return nothing. And then we're just simply going to copy that on episode clicked. We're going to do this, call it here, and we're going to call it with our character ID. Perfect. So now our composable is hoisting up that on click event. We now have the Lambda understanding where that call is coming from. And this is what happens when we actually click that button on the screen. So now when we rerun the app, we should see a little bit of a change. And let's see, so we'll scroll down to the bottom of the page. We'll hit view all episodes and we navigate just like that to another page. Yeah, I went through and just updated the color for that text element on the screen, but there we have it. We are navigating properly. When we go ahead and go backwards, we see that there is a back stack appropriately. We go ahead and back up again, and we do not have anything else. We go out of the app at that point. So here we are. We are navigating between uh, composables using our nav host. Go ahead, view all episodes, we'll see it happen again. We get a nice little simple animation, back stack covered for us. Now my one question here though is why do we have zero as our character ID? Interesting, so taking a look at this, key character ID expected integer, but was string default value of zero is returned. So it looks like here the get int is actually failing because it is expecting a string, expecting character ID to be declared as a string. Oh, okay, yep. And then by default here, all arguments are passed as strings. We can use the nav arguments, create, quickly create name nav, nav arguments to specify it ex, its exact type. Sorry for stumbling through that, but uh, okay. So we can go ahead and change that around. That's in this one here. So we're just gonna say, so we're just gonna go ahead and import some things here, import the nav type. This is not going to be string type, but instead it's going to be an int type. This is not going to be user ID, but it's going to be character ID. And if we go ahead and rerun things, that is now, uh, sh we should be telling the composable, hey, you know, this is being passed as an integer. We should have everything and look at that. It's now parsing correctly. We now are passing an integer through instead of just strings through. So that was a little bit more exciting here. Let's just go ahead and rerun this at like a completely different um, character ID. So 145, make sure all this works properly. And we see Glenn here eating a bowl of God knows what. And then if we click on view all episodes, we see the correct character 145. Perfect. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, following along. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate a like, subscribe if you are brand new. We'll continue building out this character episode screen. We'll add in a little bit of a caching layer because as we go back, we see we are making another network call, but we already have that information on screen. So we'll clean that up, clean this up here. And again, I will catch you in the next one. Thanks so much.